Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Victoria. This is Radiant Moon Tarot. Today, we are having a look at the month of May of 2023. This reading is for all you singles out there looking for new love. So if you are already in a romantic partnership of some kind, please go and check out the love readings. They're already posted for you. This is just if you're single, ready to mingle, or maybe you're wondering where some blocks may be that are preventing love from entering your life in the way that you want it to. So let's get uh, into the month of May here. Of course, uh, in case you're not already aware, uh, we do have Mercury retrograde in the sign of Taurus, and this is all the way up until about the middle of the month. So um, unfortunately, sometimes with Mercury retrograde, we do get technology snafus. Um, we get uh, uh, communication and messages that are like misunderstood or misconstrued or even that go missing. That's always a good time. Um, so just be a little bit aware of that, that technology and communication may go a little bit sideways. Make sure that you're just very clear on what it is that you want to say. And um, also, if you're attending any messages, kind of, you know, type out whatever you're looking to say. Walk away, grab a cup of coffee, grab some water or something like that, and uh, come back and reread it again. And you might just change what you want to say in there. Retrograde energy can also bring about um, people or situations or memories or feelings or triggers from your past. And we do have a we do have a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio that's also probably dredging up some things and uh, but it's to help you okay um, so it is an energy of closure um, it is an energy of reflection uh, with the not just with the lunar eclipse but also with the mercury retrograde so you may just be reviewing some things in your life you might be looking back and you know really uh, evaluating yourself honestly and truthfully and you know this is where we get epiphanies this is where we get the clarity that we're looking for and uh, this is our opportunity to really let something go um, the full moon that we We've got this lunar eclipse is a south node eclipse so it really is a big cleansing and purging and walking away uh, in a lot of cases permanently from some old um, energies feelings patterns habits um, behaviors all of that kind of stuff the stuff that's preventing us from moving forward with clarity a sense of purpose and with that pep in our step with that freedom so um, even though this energy is intense um, it does serve a really great purpose. And of course, Scorpio is represented by the death card and we have Pluto in play with that. And it brings us change and evolution uh, endings, which pave the path and open up doors for new beginnings. So it is a very positive energy. It is a very intense energy. And it is one where you might be recognizing that you may still have some triggers that come up and it's serving that purpose for you to really highlight those things and take care of them once and for all but the good news is whatever we're cleansing purging we're making some decisions we're letting things go we're healing we're evolving this is paving the path for a better tomorrow okay so some of you are very much leaps and bounds ahead of others others you maybe a little bit more work to do but this is necessary work all right and so sometimes we just need to roll up our sleeves and do some stuff in internally within ourselves all right um so let's get into your month um some of you may also by the way still uh be focusing on your money and your career because this mercury retrograde is in the sign of taurus and it's all about your resources, your money, how you make it, how you spend it. Uh, some of you might actually be moving at this time or changing careers. So sometimes when we're in that energy, our um, romantic uh, interests or our romantic uh, quest, shall we say, um, kind of takes a little bit of a back seat. So I feel like there's probably a little bit of a turning point around mid-month for you. And we do have a new moon in Taurus. Um, I think it's the 19th or the 20th uh, as well. I just don't have that date in front of me. So uh, this is a chance for those new beginnings and setting some intentions for like the next six months or so. So let's get right into your reading. This particular video is going to be for all Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, 
sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Make sure, especially because we've got eclipse energy, which you're probably already feeling. Okay, I know I am. It's uh, it, it's actually the 2nd of May when I'm doing this reading because I had my own technology snafus. And uh, quite honestly, I'm kind of over the eclipse energy already and we haven't even had it yet. So it is just center and ground your energy, count to 10 before you engage um, in anything, in any arguments or before you like you know, bark back at somebody or something like that, chances are someone's words just not, aren't necessarily coming out right. All right. So yes, make sure you check out your sun, moon, rising and your Venus signs. Um, if you are not uh, Capricorn, Aquarius or Pisces, or if your other, other placements are out of that range, I do have three other videos up. Like I said, I got hit by the Mercury retrograde bug and um, I had to consolidate videos. It was just things were just getting stuck in uh, Never Neverland. So Let's get right into it. I've got timestamps in the description box down below, also in the comment section, so they're easy to find. Um, and again, I'll also put the links to the other readings down there as well, so you can find those easily also. So let's get right into it. We're going to start with Capricorn. And hello, Capricorn. Let's have a look and see what kind of love is coming in for you guys in the month ahead. What energies are surrounding you? New love, please, for our Capricorn singles. See if we can hook these guys up. Let's see what we've got coming out for you. We have evolution. Hello, Pluto. All right, this is wonderful. This is the time of change, of growth, of evolution for you, removing obstacles and blocks and clearing that pathway. Very nice energy. And we also have vision and commitment. So commit to the vision that you have. Some of you may actually be having visions right now. Um, this, uh, this eclipse energy is very powerful, very strong, very intense very emo emotionally charged, but also brings those spiritual insights as well. So some of you may actually have some vision in your mind's eye of what it is that you want to attract into your life or even maybe what is even manifesting. So keep that vision, that third eye, that is activated like there's no tomorrow. We have evolution coming in here. So, of course, this is a time of evolution, of growth, of change for you. Out with the old, you're moving forward. you got a clearer sense of direction, and there's no looking back, all right? You realize that obstacles are merely lessons on your path to love. Yes, they are, okay? And this is a time of reflection, right? We're looking at, at the past. Where have we been? What have we experienced? What did we think that we did right um, what did we think we did wrong? Um, because part of, you know, finding forgiveness and healing and letting go is also forgiving yourself, by the way. Okay. So um, we, there's, it always takes two to tango in a relationship. And sometimes those past things that um, have occurred in relationships, we do, even if we didn't do anything wrong, we do tend to harbor guilt or shame, right? And those kind of things. So it is very much a cleansing and a purging time and for you to evolve and open your heart and really welcome love into your life. Of course, we've got vision coming out here for you as well. No matter what you see in the bigger picture of, no matter what, you see the bigger picture of a loving, just universe. Yes, you do. Okay, you're seeing the big picture. Your heart is open. Your eyes are open. Your maybe you're even, you know, as we come out of the inner energy of this eclipse, you might even just be feeling a little bit different. You might just be feeling a little bit changed and all for the better. Maybe you're feeling lighter and brighter. Maybe the grass is a little bit greener. Um, maybe you're just recognizing that, hey, you know what? There's actually a lot of good people out in the world. And uh, it's because there's some energetic shift that's going on for you. And it is wonderful and it's exciting. So embrace that energy. However, the vision energy is also about having that picture in your mind's eye to manifest love and into your life in the best, in the healthiest of ways. We have commitment coming in here as well. Some of you are manifesting a committed relationship if that's what you're looking for. But the commitment is also to you and your journey. But when we're committed to something, we're not necessarily pining over something or, you know, uh, crying in our coffee that, oh my God, I don't have this and woe is me. We're not doing that. We're not obsessing. We're just committed to our journey. We're putting one foot in front of the other. We're open and receptive. We're ready to say yes to things. We're ready to meet people. Okay. And we're committed in a very healthy way. But like I said, I think some of you are also attracting a, it's, a, a relationship or a connection that may lead you down the path to longer term commitment. You dedicate yourself you dedicate yourself to your beliefs wholeheartedly, knowing that love is the very essence of your being. 
So beautiful messages out there for you. I like that for you, Capricorn. It's very nice. So let's see what else we've got coming in here for you guys. We're going to start with things that are pointing to what you're letting go of. Let's have a look. We have the sun. I think you're letting go of any kind of doubts, um, any worries about the future. Um, I think if things have been feeling dark and dreary and cloudy, um, I feel like in this energy, I feel like you are seeing the potential, right? You're letting go of negativity and it's being replaced by the sun. Okay, and the sun here is beautiful. It doesn't matter where the sun lands. Um, it's always a positive card, okay? It's always positive energy. So even through your darkest days, this gives you that energy to see your way forward, okay? Some of you here, you are going through a little bit of a dark night of the soul. You are going through some personal growth, spiritual growth, and evolution. And sometimes you go to some dark places to go through that, okay? And the sun says that, you know what? As you're working through those shadow energies, I am right here guiding you and protecting you. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So I think this sun is really guiding you and leading you forward and really helping you to see things a little bit more positively. Open yourself up to opportunities and possibilities, right? Because the sun, without the sun, nothing can grow. It gives you wonderful positive energy, positive vibes, but it does also bring abundance and success into your life. So I think you're also letting go of any kind of lack of mentality there as well, focusing on the have nots I can't do I'll never find uh-uh instead you're like I am beautiful I am handsome I am powerful I am strong I am worthy I am loved right and when you're in all of that energy that's when this really wonderful magic happens so I think there's a big shift there for you all in the best of ways the energy that is coming towards you we do have the world card so an end of a cycle right this is you know something wrapping up something coming to a conclusion so for some of you you have been on quite the journey thus far a lot of ups and a lot of downs and uh, a lot of some crazy energy and the world says that there's something here coming to an end and you might be reflecting on the past you might be thinking about what it is you want and the world card always reminds us here that our life is filled with cycles right sometimes we're up sometimes we're down sometimes we're moving forward sometimes it feels like we're backpedaling um you know in uh you know in full speed right and so the world card here shows that there's a positive end to some cycle in your life you're making some decisions you're looking at the big picture you're ready to move forward you're ready to expand in your energy but the world card always reminds you to celebrate everything that you've experienced to celebrate all of your triumphs all of your challenges and everything that you've overcome and everything that has built the wisdom in your soul celebrate all of that because that is really what builds you and what makes you and it brings a, a good solid foundation to you and this is those building blocks that help you along your journey right so you know maybe you've learned some life lessons maybe you've you're reflecting on the past a little bit and you're like man that was a tough lesson to learn but you know what I'm never going to do that again, right? Or I'm never going to, you know, I'm never going to ignore that red flag again, right? So it's those life lessons that we learn on our journey for love that are very important. So celebrate, okay, with that world card. Um, the world card can also represent that for some of you, there is some movement or travel um, in your future. We do actually have the hermit card here as well, which can be about um, bringing in some travel too. Um, so some of you may actually be moving jobs, moving where you live, or maybe you're going on a vacation to a tropical destination, perhaps, and leaving things behind and maybe you just never know you might just get a little bit lucky um either well you maybe have a vacation fling but sometimes uh when we go on vacation it's just what the doctor ordered and sometimes we do make new connections as we're on vacation a little lucky accident shall we shall we say right you bump into somebody you start talking and it turns out they live in the same city as you and you're like oh my god I live just around the corner and this may be where you can be like you know all of a sudden find love right so I think there's a little bit of magic in the air for you. The blessings headed your way. This is the energy benefiting you the most. We've got the hermit card and we've got the justice card. This is beautiful. This is you going within, reflecting, thinking, doing some soul searching. This is also giving you the opportunity to retreat into yourself and to heal. The justice card can help you to discover the truths 
to be honest with yourself and to make some very important decisions. And it's because you take the time in the hermit card to take that step back, right? To really connect with your own self on a soul level. The hermit is where we go to set intentions, to set goals. There's some wish, there's some dream, something there that lights your lantern, that paves your path forward, that really lights that pathway so that you can follow it so that you've got that guidance right within so is a wonderful energy right yes it's a solitary energy but sometimes in those times of solitude is where we actually get those deeper insights that's where we gain our wisdom because we have taken the time we have stepped back we're not rushing the issue right and we're allowing ourselves to process things right in a healthy way we also do have the justice card here as well and the justice card brings balance and harmony into your world it also restores um, it also gives you an extra energetic boost here to make balanced and fair decisions to um, recognize that, you know, for example, if you're, you know, hashing out an old relationship, right, this gives you um, the ability to recognize that, yes, there's two sides to every story. There it takes two to tango, right? There's in a, some, in most cases, as somebody isn't 100% right and another person's not always 100% wrong, there are certain cases where that may not be the case, right? Um, but in general, there are, you know, um, people, we're in a relationship um, as part of a union, as part of a commitment, and, you know, we all tend to not always behave the way that we want to and sometimes we do play a role in things as well and I think this is you recognizing that yes there's equal there's not one person specifically to blame right everyone does shoulder a little bit of responsibility and this can actually be a very freeing energy and yes like I said there are certain circumstances where yes there is one person very much to blame okay but most cases that's not entirely um, all it's made out to be. But the Justice card brings honesty and truth to your situation and it also brings some really good karma. So you've got some wonderful energy there. Now, I also do think here in this energy, okay, we've got Virgo energy with the Hermit, we've got Libra and energy with the Justice card. Um, and I do think also with this energy that part of your blessing, okay, if you've been waiting for a legal situation to wrap up, um, that keeps you single. Okay. It's like, I need to be completely single, right? In this hermit energy. And I'm waiting for some paper, some documentation or the final word down from the mountain and with the world card there, right? That complete closure for something. So I think some of you may have some legalities, maybe from an old job or probably from an old relationship that are about to get wrapped up in the month of May. So maybe you, um, receive your divorce papers. Maybe you have an alimony settlement, um, especially since from Taurus season, it can uh, really have something to do with your money. Um, this may be custody battles that, um, you know, that uh, uh, re get resolved as well. The Sun card can represent some children there as well. So I just think that there's maybe something there with a past relationship that you just got that boom, the judge wraps his gavel and you walk away with those signed papers and then you are completely free. And, um, you know, it can really set the stage because sometimes it's hard to find new love and to be completely open when you've got something hanging over your head. So again, that sun, thank you. Again, that sun is bringing out, um, you know, those rays of sunshine chasing away the shadows um, or the uncertainties. So I think for, you know, if you have that going on, I think you may get a little bit of a uh, freedom, okay, in the month ahead. So we've got the King of Wands, we've got the Ace of Pentacles, and we have Justice card coming out a second time. So yes, um, yes, absolutely. You are um, making some very important decisions here. And uh, I think that you're maybe even thinking long and hard about something about what you want to attract, um, you know, what you want out of love, right? You're thinking long and hard. Um, about that right because you got that clarity and you've got that vision right 
So I think you are using this to your advantage in this energy, okay? But two justice cards out here, you got a healthy dose of good karma coming your way. And man, oh man, do I ever feel like you deserve it. I feel like it's very much justified. Um, you're getting your just rewards and this is excellent energy, okay? The, uh, the universe is bringing you someone exciting, someone who shares your vision, your goals, your dreams, maybe shares a little bit of your zest for life, your drive, your determination, and somebody who is very um, exciting to be around, okay? So we could have a Virgo, we could have a Libra since we've got this twice. We may also have fire sign here um, coming out with the King of Wands. So you could have um, you could have that Leo, that Sag or that Aries person that comes in here or just somebody who embodies those qualities, right? Um, you know, we don't always meet people and the first line out of our mouths is not always, hey baby, what's your sign? Okay, uh, I mean, unless you're, you know, kind of joking around with somebody and pick, you know, using cheesy pickup lines, but Hey, you know what? Sometimes they work. Um, just saying, especially if you've got someone with a really good sense of humor, but we do have the King of Wands coming in here for you. So I feel like there's someone coming towards you. Okay. That is very exciting. Um, they're successful. They're confident. They got a lot of chemistry. Okay. And they've got a zest for life. They're motivated. They find inspiration. They may actually be, um, a very creative person. Okay. Or they just know what they want and they go for it and they just don't worry about what's going to happen along their journey. Right. They're just ready for pretty much everything. And that keeps those doors open for them. Right. It's that kind of person that you would envy. How come everything always goes, you know, Michael's way, right? How come everything always goes Bob's way, right? It's because they just know that things are going to go their way. They don't doubt themselves, right, in that energy. So I think there might be someone here that's very um, that's very exciting and that really gets your motor running. Now, it does not have to be a male, okay? Uh, it's all about the energy. So the king energy is just about someone who is in touch with their masculine side. They're not afraid to take initiative. And they're not afraid to take charge, Okay, and it doesn't mean they're not in tune with their feminine side either, but I think when it comes to getting what they want or making something happen for themselves, I think they just stand up and grab it, right? So they can be somebody very exciting for you. Like I said, it's just the energy is this masculine. It does not have to be a male or a female um, in that, okay? Now, that can also be your energy. You're feeling more confident. You're feeling um, like you can conquer the world and, uh, you know, you might actually meet somebody through some creative endeavor or something, or you're just getting out there and having a good time. Now the King of Wands also likes to have fun and likes a sense of adventure. Um, the King of Wands is the more mature version of the Knight of Wands who is just in it for the conquest, right? Always on a mission, always has a goal, always, uh, slightly irresistible, probably with some red flags and, um, but is always, you know, just one thing after the other. The, the King of Wands is that very much more mature version of that. Um, but they actually will commit. Okay. But they, they are still in touch with their youthful energy. And so considering we have the world card coming out here, I do think that maybe if someone's going on a vacation to a tropical destination, of course, don't pin all of your hopes on it, okay? But I just think that there might be uh, a little bit of a happy accident that comes in there, and you just might meet somebody. It may be for it may be something that that um, has the potential to turn into something for a long time, or maybe it's just what the doctor ordered and just that little vacation romance kind of thing, and it comes in and then it goes away, and you're just left with those happy memories. But it prepares you perhaps for welcoming. Um, a more mature, better kind of love into your life later on, especially if you've been um, away from the dating game for a while. Maybe it just gives you a little bit of practice, okay? Or maybe it's just something fun and you have no expectations and sometimes that is just what you need, okay? But we do have the Ace of Pentacles, so there is something manifesting in your world with this energy, okay? This is a manifestation 101 with this. This brings a little bit of luck. It brings new beginnings. Um, it also brings surprises, okay? The Aces are gifts from the universe. This is something that you've created or something that you're manifesting in and something that you're wanting, okay? So this can just be what, think of whatever it is that you have set your intentions for in regards to love 
love and this is being shown to you that yep some of you have something coming to fruition in the month of May and you've been waiting for this for quite a while look and see what kind of intentions you set for manifestation um, in the fall of 2022 um, because the eclipses go on six month cycles and this is the very last one in that cycle right so it's a six month um, culmination of whatever intentions that you had set way back then okay so you could be having something here now but for others of you this is spirit saying hey you know what you might have a little bit of things to get in alignment really think about what it is you want set those intentions speak your truth make those decisions right because wherever you put your focus wherever you put your energy that is what's good that is what's going to come back into your life and we want to make sure that we're attracting all of the wonderful positive high vibe things into your life so don't really look at what it is you don't want because we don't want to focus on that too much right and you do need to reflect a little bit right and that's fine but we don't want to live in that energy we want to look in the sun right we want to stare at that sun and we want to say okay if this was love and life and health and vitality and happiness and joy and all these wonderful things blossoming what would that be and that's what we want to focus on to manifest in always manifest from abundance and positivity never from one of lack okay although we do need to visit that energy of the things we don't want to kind of maybe just get ourselves a little bit of clarity to say oh yeah that's right that's not what I want. Okay, I'm going to focus on this. Okay, so just to get ourselves into a little bit um, of a better perspective. Okay, but I do think that there might be a little bit of luck on your side. And Spirit's also telling the rest of you here that to, at this uh, new moon in Taurus, Earth Energy, the new moon in Taurus later on in the month is going to be a perfect time for you to really set those intentions to manifest um, the right kind of person in and be confident in that, but you got to be willing to let your manifestations go. Okay. Um, just remember not to obsess over those. All right. But yes, like I said, we do have the justice card here again. So, uh, some really good vibes coming in, um, for sure. Some decisions, some of you might actually have more than one offer <laughs> that might come in. So you really do need to make that decision, but we've got some very wonderful, healthy energy there. Now on this particular card, there is is two people and normally the justice card does not have two people okay but in this one it does and it's because there is an energy with it for really for love right there is that energy there of being open and being honest and making a decision in a non-biased way right opening up to someone else's point of view now I did say a little bit earlier in your reading that eclipses and retrogrades, Mercury retrograde especially, can bring about people from your past. So I feel this message is probably just for a very select few of you. I feel that in the event that somebody from your past, a past romantic relationship, okay, in the event that that person comes back into your life, I feel like there might be a potential, if that's what you want, of repairing and restoring that connection very important decision to make that but I feel like that door would only be cracked open a jar it would only be unlocked if they're willing to start fresh if they're willing to recognize um, where you need to let go of things or if they have done their work right because if people haven't changed, if they haven't evolved, then we're just going to repeat things over and over and over again, right? And then it's like, oh God, why didn't I just shoot you out the door? Okay, so I do feel, especially with all the Scorpio energy that we've got going on and with the Eclipse energy, I feel like there's going to be some stipulations um, about somebody coming back if that is your situation. And if those stipulations aren't met, um, then I feel like you're going to finally eclipse that person out of your life. And this will just bring about some closure for you, okay, rather than anything else. There is also a little bit of an energy here, though, um, that uh, there might be some missed connections that come back into your reality here as well. And not necessarily old, um, you know, old lovers or anything like that, but this can be, you know, um, an old friend that you haven't seen for a long time, or this can be an old business associate that maybe usually you always got along really well with, and you joked around a little bit and there was some good chemistry there. And maybe they changed jobs or you changed jobs, or maybe you were already in a, in a relationship or maybe they were. And it's those kind of misconnections that can, um, that can come back around at this time because with eclipses, they bring faded energy. Okay, so if it's written in the cards for you, 
um, if that is part of your destiny. There just might be a little happy accident somewhere along the way, that little chance meeting the right place at the right time, and especially with that Ace of Pentacles, right? Spirit is delivering you and aligning people and places and opportunities for you to, um, you know, to find that love or to reconnect with the one that got away. We have mature man coming in here for you. Okay, so uh, this can certainly represent a male figure or again, second time in a row, somebody who is very in touch with their masculine side, right? Look at Mr. Silver Fox there. Okay, he knows what he wants. He knows what he wants. He's got a mature outlook on love. He's not afraid of making a commitment. He's confident in his own skin. He's looking at you very longingly there. And he ain't going to play games with you, right? This is not a game player right here. Mm -mm. This is not a, conqui a conquistador or anything like that. This is not a fly-by-night kind of person. This is the kind of person who would come in. They would probably treat you very well um, because they have that maturity that um, are, uh, about them, okay? And, you know, they're probably someone that would, you know, um, enjoy some of the finer things in life perhaps, okay? They may possibly be an age difference for some of you, okay? But it doesn't have to be, right? Because we can be mature without being old in human years, right? We can have that, um, you know, that... Uh, past life experience, right? That makes us wise and mature. So this is someone who would treat you pretty good. Now, if you're looking for a sugar daddy or something, you might just find that too. But um, I feel like we're looking for a little bit something deeper than that. Okay. So I just think there might be somebody here who's just not going to screw you around. Is not going to play games. We have the beauty queen energy here as well. So we do have masculine and feminine energy coming in here. And the beauty queen can certainly represent somebody um, entering your life, okay? This may be somebody who is very much in touch with their feminine side, or it could actually be a female, okay? And this person um, has a zest for life, very much like the king of wands. They like to travel. They like to create things. They um, are probably very active, very physically active, most likely, um, um, they're very well put together. They take care of themselves and um, they're living their best life. And there's something about them that would maybe um, very much draw you to them. Okay. Whether they're male or female. And we can also suggest that this could be the same person as well. Okay. Um, this person who is very balanced. Um, they like to get out and have fun. They're well put together. They take care of their self. They're well groomed. Okay. And they have this exuberance, this sets for life, but they also have a mature energy about them as well. So, uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes on the surface, someone might look a little boring or maybe they have a boring job. Um, but then really beneath that surface, man, are they ever a ball of wax, right? Are they ever a good time? So, um, you know, so we could have a little bit of a mixed bag, either two people there or just one person rolled into one. The beauty queen energy can also be you, male or female, doesn't matter. Spirit saying, um, <laughs> spirit saying to you here, get ready. Okay. And put yourself out there. Um, because you just never know where or when, uh, love may strike. Okay. And you know, we've all been there where, uh, especially if you bump into someone from your past, 99% of the time, if you're going to run into somebody from your past, a past work colleague or a, someone from like your high school days, your college days or something, 99% chance it's going to be when you've rolled out of bed, you realize you don't have cream for your coffee, you've thrown on your sweatpants, your hair is a mess, you haven't brushed your teeth and you're stumbling over to the corner store to get that cream for your coffee and it's like, oh, hi. And you're like, damn it, I should have brushed my hair, <laughs> right? And we've all been there and done that. So Spirit says here that, um, you know, that um, not that you have to dress yourself up to the hilt every single day. And no, no one should really judge a book by its cover. But sometimes it's our own inner um, inner embarrassment there, as, right? And it's like, oh my God, I just, I need to look at least presentable, right? I don't need to, you know, be wearing heels and a dress or a three-piece suit. I just need to look like human, right? So spirits just say, there, be prepared, okay? We do also have money coming in here for you as well. So of course we are in Taurus season, Mercury retrograde in Taurus, and a lot of people are focused on their money. We do have the Ace of Pentacles coming in here as well. So again, some of you here could have some sort of legal situation that wraps up and this frees up your money or it brings money to you, okay? Um, this can also be where you're focused on your career path, on your job. And as soon as you get that squared away, 
Um, and I feel like there's good news, especially Ace of Pentacles and the money card. Okay. And I feel like once you get that squared away, now you're like, okay, now I can really focus on love. Okay. Cause a lot of people are really sidetracked right now by money, right? A lot of economic uncertainty. Um, the cost of goods has gone up astronomically. I think I bought like four things at the store the other day. It was like almost $60 and I'm just buying for me. It wasn't exactly anything interesting. I'm not buying steak and lobster. So things are getting very, very expensive these days so um once i think that i think a money situation may resolve itself and this can really open you up now we have past life energy here as well hmm interesting number one you might be closing out a karmic cycle in the best of ways Okay, there's something from your past lives that's been repeated over and over and over and over and over again. And now with both of those justice cards coming out there, bam, your time to shut the door on that. Okay, this is the time to move forward. This is the time to start fresh. So any old habits, patterns, behaviors, beliefs, fears, worries, doubts, you name it. I feel you are shutting that down. And this beauty queen energy, there you go, makes you a lot freer, a lot lighter, a lot brighter. Beautiful. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, if that's you. So if you're doing that shadow work right now, okay, this is going to pay off in, in extraordinary ways. Again, you might wake up and you'll be like, everything seems fresher and brighter and things just feel more vibrant and alive. You might feel that way and it's because you've done this work. Okay, that really does set the stage for welcoming a healthy love into your life. But the past card here, a past life card can also represent that there may be a past person um, for, that you have known in a past life. Okay, that may come in here for you. So we're talking things like soulmates, possibly a twin flame, although this particular deck does have a twin flame card and I don't have that coming out. So most likely um, that soulmate connection that we all kind of want, even if soulmates aren't always meant to be around forever, but I feel like you're attracting the right kind of person, right? And so it could just be somebody who, when you meet this person, you just click, you just connect and you're like, I feel like I know you right? And it's because you have known this person in that past life. Now, some of you might actually know this person already, or you're meet, meeting this person very imminently. Again, this King of Wands energy, your chemical attraction to this person is probably a little bit confusing. And um, especially if you've never experienced it before, you're like, whoa, what is this energy? This is kind of weird. And it may freak you out at first, okay? But trust the process, trust your journey, and trust your ability to make the right decisions. So I'm going to leave that there for you folks. I hope there was something here that resonated for you on some level. If there was, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment down in the box below, say hello, and um, I hope you guys have a fantastic month. Knuckle down, uh, center and ground your energy for this eclipse, and don't be afraid to go into hermit mode a little bit and do some of that inner work. It will very much be very rewarding for you and it will pay off in huge huge ways okay so thank you for watching guys we're moving to Aquarius hello Aquarius let's have a look and see what we've got coming in for you guys for the month of May Aquarian singles looking for new love what messages do you need them to hear thank you very much we have action yes Ooh, interesting Okay, number one, you're probably being called to action. We also have cooperation, so be flexible, open, adaptable. Okay, and we also have kindness coming in. Yes, be nice to yourself and others. I feel more to yourself, Aquarius. Okay, sometimes we beat ourselves up just a little bit. But we do have the action energy. So for some of you, you're called to take action. It's time to get out of your back cave, Aquarius. It's time to get out there and meet new people, try new things, get out of your comfort zone a little bit. And I feel like you will be rewarded. Use this Pluto in your sign energy to your best advantage. Okay. Um, it is going to go retrograde um, in, uh, I think, early June. Okay. So take advantage of this energy in the month of May. And this is your chance to embrace your personal power power to evolve, to change, to let things go, to try new things. Okay. All of these wonderful energies. All right. Always a little bit of challenge for you because you're a fixed sign, right? You don't really love change. You embrace change when it's necessary, but you like to take your time to make sure that it's, you know, all going in the right way. Right. So 
you're being called to action. But I also do think that you've got some activity in the month ahead here as well, okay? And so maybe you finally start to gain some traction in your love life, right? You're talking to new people, you're getting out, you're meeting new people, okay? And you're starting to see a little bit of movement the action energy. You have the courage to express the unique loving colors of your soul. Okay. Let people see the real you Aquarius. They either like you or you don't, and you don't care. Okay. Um, it's like, this is me. Okay. Hi, <laughs> I'm an Aquarius. Okay. And this is me. Nice to meet you. I am who I am. Okay. And I'm weird and I'm wonderful and you know, I'm pretty awesome. Um, but I also have my fears like anyone else. So, you know, this is just let your light shine Aquarius. Okay. I feel like this is your season. This is your time. We also have cooperation coming in here, very connected to the heart chakra, chakra to be open, to be receptive, to be flexible, to be adaptable. Okay. In your quest to manifest the energy of love, you realize that every person has experience and value. Okay. Um, so every person, every experience that you encounter, there is value in those things, right? Even if it doesn't result um, in love or relationship or whatever it is you're looking for, right? On your quest to manifest things, we recognize all of the gifts and the blessings that the universe is sending and aligning for us along our path, along our journey. Okay. So everything has value. Count all of your blessings, even for the things that haven't worked out for you. When we count our blessings, we're thankful, we're grateful. We get more of that to be thankful and grateful for, right? So we also have kindness here. You are a humanitarian. <laughs> Look, I can't make that up. You are known as the humanitarians of the Zodiac. You are a humanitarian made of love and you are able to share that energy with others. Yes, you are, okay? Sometimes, though, Aquarius, part of your shadow side is that you go to extremes in that. You spend so much time um, taking care of other people, making sure that they're good and they're on the right track and, you know, all of this stuff. And you tend to sometimes overexert yourself, right? Because you forget to take care of numero uno. Don't forget to take care of number one, okay? You gotta love yourself. You gotta practice self-love and self-care. You gotta do nice things for yourself every once in a while, Okay, and this gives you more energy and opportunity to share your light with other people. Now, it may be through a random act of kindness that you may find love. The universe works in funny ways and this eclipse can bring out faded energy, faded opportunities, faded encounters. Okay, so count your blessings and uh, believe in the impossible. Wow. Okay. So as I'm talking, I'm pulling cards for you, and I don't know if you can see what those are. We have the sun, we have the star, and we have the magician. Whoa. Okay. Use this energy to your advantage. All hail Pluto. Let's embrace change, okay? Say yes to change. Now, the sun card represents the things that we're uh, releasing from our lives here in the month of May. And the sun is such an incredibly positive card. We're not releasing the sun. We're not releasing positivity or growth or energy or abundance or success or um, the ability to create the life that we want. No, 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 no. What the sun does is chase away the shadows, chases away the fears, chases away the anxieties. Okay, it shines a light on our future. And of course, the sun is at play with the eclipse, with that moon, right? And... You may be eclipsing things out of your life that are prohibiting you and limiting your growth, causing both blocks and the resistance in your world. And you are very much embracing that sun to gain clarity, to gain a great sense of direction and to see things for their true potential. It's giving you such a beautiful energy, such a positive vibe. And of course, why not? The energy coming towards you is the star. You Number number one, you could be actually attracting another Aquarian towards you or someone with heavy Aquarian placements in their birth chart somewhere. Now, I'm an Aquarian myself. I've never actually dated another Aquarian. Um, I'm not sure how that would go. Um, it may go really well, actually. You know, I mean, sometimes they say opposites attract and all that. Eh, it kind of depends. Um, <laughs> it really does depend. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, like, because this, we are in very much an age of enlightenment, um, a lot of collect, a lot of people in the collective energy are having awakenings, all this kind of stuff. I think if you get someone, maybe not someone with um, the Aquarian sun or rising, but maybe someone with different Aquarian placements in their birth chart, that may actually really kind of 
be really kind of interesting, I think. But anyway, um, I'm not really one to, I'm not a doom and gloom reader. Um, when I dabble in astrology, I'm not the doom and gloom. I will recognize challenges um, and shadow sides of things for what they are, right? But it's all about how we move forward, okay? So, you know, even if, you know, even if there's two signs, you see these all the time, oh, this sign should never get together with this sign. But the problem with going like that is black and white is that, um, is that everybody has multiple influences in their birth chart that help, um, that help determine kind of who they are, right? And so we've got different things, you know, your moon placement, right? Mine, it, my moon um, is in uh, is in Cancer. Okay, my Venus is in Pisces. Um, my Sun is Aquarius, right? But my rising is Sag. Okay, so I've got like you know a little bit of a mixed bag in there, and you know, uh, unfortunately, being my Aquarian energy, the, uh, the the Venus and Pisces, the feelings get in the way sometimes, right? They're kind of annoying sometimes. But you know, but any everyone has all of these different aspects of themselves. So try not to pigeon yourself, pigeonhole yourself into just saying I'll never date this and I'll never date this, because there's a lot of other things that go on behind the scenes that we're not always aware of on first meeting. So don't um, don't poo poo some somebody just because of their sign. Okay. And I don't really feel like you would anyway, necessarily, but sometimes we do. Okay. Um, so anyways, but the star energy, this is you, this is really understanding about yourself. This is really being connected with your intuition, um, with your higher chakras, with your third eye. And this is you being really confident in yourself and wishing big, dreaming big, believing in all of the blessings that the universe is aligning for you. The star brings about an energy of peace and calm and serendipity in your life brings balance and healing. It brings some clarity to you as well. Maybe even some deeper insights. Okay. Um, so just be aware of some like spiritual epiphanies and a little bit of magic in the air because I feel like you are embracing all of these things. Okay. But the star also brings you blessings. The star is a card of miracles and blessings, your dreams, your wishes. For some of you, those are coming true this month. Okay. So hold on to your hat. Okay. Believe in yourself. Be open. Be receptive. Okay. Don't judge a book by its cover. Sometimes, most of the time, you're wide open, but sometimes not so much. Right. So, you know, just keep that open heart. Keep that open mind and just see where something goes. Just trust your intuition. Trust your instincts. And, you know, like I said, some of you do have some sort of wishes and dreams coming in this, for you this month. For others of you, the star card says, you know, this is a perfect time to set your intentions if you haven't already. If you have, then the universe is very busy behind the scenes, aligning stars for you, aligning people, places, and situations for you, okay? And others of you, if you are still setting manifestations, figuring out what you want out of love, reach for the stars, okay? Dream big, think big, your wildest dreams, your wildest imagination, set your sights on that, Okay, what would be the perfect person, the perfect relationship would give you everything you wanted plus more because the star card also does bring success and abundance to you as well, plus a sense of wonder. Okay, so really embrace this energy and use it to its full potential. Okay, now sometimes with the star card, yes, miracles and blessings here and now today. Others of you, the star card reminds you that a little bit more patience may be required. No one likes to hear, be patient, okay? It's just like a hysterical person saying, be calm, right? It's not always helpful, okay? But in this energy, though, it is very important because when we're talking about love, and this is what people quite often do forget, when we're talking about love and attracting those people towards us, it's not just us that has to be ready. It's also the other person. So you don't know what stage they're at, right? So that's why sometimes we do need to be embrace a little bit of patience. We do need to keep that open mind. We do need to take things one day at a time and stay optimistic and stay positive because there's some things going on behind the scenes and we don't always know what that is, right? So all we can do is be open. Okay, so but I do think that there is something wonderful being orchestrated for you, maybe even a little bit of luck. 
But we do have the magician and this is the energy benefiting you the most in the month of May. Your ability to focus on what you want, your ability to use all of your tools, your resources, external and internal to create something, to make something happen. The magician does speak to your inner power, your inner magic, your ability to have a vision, have a goal, have a dream and then manifest that into your reality. It really does remind you of the connection that you have with between the earth and the stars as above, so below, right? Your ability to harness all of that and the star reminds you of that as well, your own personal power. So be focused, use your resources, get out of your comfort zone, manifest what it is that you want. Never focus on what you don't want. We always want to manifest from a place of, abundance and positivity, the sun and the star. Okay. Always, always, always. Sometimes we need to reflect a little bit to remember what we don't want. Okay. It's like, well, I don't want that again. Okay. Um, but that's really only just so that we can turn things around and, and hold more power to our intentions. But recognize your unlimited potential here, okay? Because that magician shows there might be a little bit of magic in the air. There might be some unexplained happenings that go on for you as well. But man, oh man, is there ever some magical energy that's coming in here for you, Aquarius. It is about freaking time. So I feel like this eclipse that's here on May 5th, I feel like this eclipse is bringing you a massive purge. Um, because, and it is an intense energy. It is that lunar eclipse at full moon on steroids in the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is, um, the death card and the death card is ruled by Pluto. Pluto is in your sign. Okay. And it is this big, massive shift of energy, this big release, this letting go, this turning your back on your past once and for all. And you are looking out to the horizon to what lays ahead and it is very empowering. You might have some spiritual growth during this time as well as for spiritual energy being in Scorpio. Okay. And you might get a huge, a huge dose of clarity. Okay. Pay attention to the signs, symbols, synchronicities around you. I feel like a lot of you are seeing a lot of those right now. Um, and you're probably really starting to feel this energy right now. Okay. So just try and stay grounded, stay centered. Um, stay positive, okay, but really embrace all of this wonderful energy. I feel like once this eclipse passes, once the dust settles a little bit, I feel like the world will feel like a different place to you. You will feel like a different person to yourself, and you just might end up with a very different um, a very different outlook on things in your world, okay? So very positive energies that are coming in for you. But look at this. We've got the Seven of Cups coming in here. So yes, you might have some decisions to make. You might have a lot of options, okay? This can also say keep your options open, all right? But when we get the Seven of Cups out of this deck, it's like look at all these offers and opportunities and all these things, right? Now, sometimes the Seven of Cups represents that you know what, when you decide to put yourself out there, when you decide to be authentically you and you're willing to get out of your comfort zone, I feel like here that there's some decisions to make. It's like, oh my goodness, it's like kind of overwhelming. Okay, so the Seven of Cups does show that there's some decisions, there's some opportunities, okay, and but it can be a little bit overwhelming. It's like, oh my God, it can also be tiring, right? So let's say you're doing online dating, right? Uh, I forget which way you swipe. I prefer to meet my people face to face why I don't actually meet meet many, but um, anyways, but uh, I've been, been there on the online dating thing, but hey, you know what, keep an open mind, right? But sometimes when you get on those things, all of a sudden you start getting bombarded with like likes or hearts or whatever they are and messages and all this kind of stuff. And so sometimes it can be overwhelming. You're like, oh my God, I don't know what to choose. I, how do I know what's real, what's not? How do I know what's positive and what's not? You know how you know? High Priestess. Your intuition is going to tell you. Your intuition is going to guide you and lead you towards the right choice, okay? Your heart is also open. So you're using all of these wonderful high vibe energies to help you make those decisions, make those choices, whether it's online dating or whether it's somewhere else that you might meet people. You might have to reinvent your wheel a little bit, right? The last couple of years has changed the landscape of how we meet new people. So uh, keep an open mind. But the seven of cups can also represent a fantasy, a daydream. So again, maybe some of you 
are already fantasizing about somebody. Maybe you're dreaming about somebody, right? This eclipse energy can bring about some wild and crazy dreams, okay? You might already have a vision in your mind's eye of what something looks like. And when the Seven of Cups comes to play, we can sometimes get a little bit lost in our daydreams, okay? We can get lost in our fantasies and our imagination. But if you're sitting on the couch and your mind's just wandering, you're just in a gentle energy, and all of a sudden you got like a movie playing in your head and you feel like it's real. Man, oh man, that could be some foresight about what you are attracting into your life. That can also be spirit sending you some energy and saying, look what I'm cooking up for you in the background. So keep those visions alive. Sometimes when we have those kind of daydreams, they're kind of warm and fuzzy. And sometimes we want to kind of, oh my goodness, I want this daydream to stay. And you get annoyed if anyone bugs you or tries to talk to you in that energy, right? But I do feel that if you're having such vivid um, uh, visions like that, um, it, there's something behind that, okay? There's meaning behind that. Okay, and again, it could be just some sort of premonition um, that, you know, that, um, you know, it can be that spirit sending you a message. Okay, whatever that is. Okay, keep that open mind. All right. But I do feel the world is a little bit your oyster as well. But again, we do have the high priestess here. Okay, really highlighting your intuition, your connection with your higher self. Now, the high priestess is also the keeper of secrets and mysteries, a very conservative, a very quiet energy. So for some of you, this is the energy that you're in right now, and you need to get out of your comfort zone, okay? You need to get out there. You need to meet new people, okay? You do need to be open to those connections because even though you're very magical and you're manifesting people into your life, chances are you're probably not just going to get a genie go poof right beside you on the couch. Um, although, granted, as I say that, I had a friend who... Uh, you know, kind of told her the same thing, right? We're like, well, you got to get out and meet people. You're not just going to have some dude manifest on your couch. Sure enough, she ended up marrying the FedEx guy that came to her house by accident. So uh, you just never know what might happen. Um, but for the majority of people, right, that's probably not going to happen. So you do need to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. You need to get out and you need to start talking to people. Okay. No, don't be mute. Okay. You got to talk to people. But the high, the high priestess is also this, a little bit of conservative, quiet, secretive energy as well. So there might be some sort of revelation. Okay. There might be a surprise headed your way, something previously, um, that you didn't know, but the high priestess also shows your ability to use your wisdom, to use your higher chakras, okay, to make the right choice for yourself, whatever that looks like to you. So trust the wisdom in your soul. You are very old souls, right? So trust that energy and uh, you will never go wrong. Now, spirit may also be sending you as, as a very spiritual connection. The high priestess can represent a very spiritual person coming in, someone that maybe you've known in a past life or someone that that spirit has manifested, uh, helped you manifest into your world and you are connected on a different plane than anyone else, right? You're just digging each other's vibes. You finish each other's sentences and you're very connected, not just from the heart, but also from spirit as well with that energy. Okay, so uh, very interesting there. But the high priestess is very connected with the moon. Okay, open and receptive with the moon, also shutting down old things. But we do have the connection with the moon with the high priestess. We do have the sun and we have the stars, right? I mean, hey, if I was reading the Norman cards right now, I'd be like, get ready to be famous. Okay, because the sun, the moon, and the stars all three together represents fame and hopefully fortune. Okay, but in this, in this instance, I just think that the stars are aligning for you. And of course, we've got the two of cups. So what is spirit bringing you a soulmate? That deep bond, two hearts, two souls meeting together. Wonderful energy, love and romance. Okay, so the two of cups can represent that there might be choices. You might have some decisions to make, but ultimately you will make the right choice and you will find that right person. So again, some of you, this is happening this month. Others of you with that star card there, spirit says again, right? We've got to be open. We've got to be receptive and we've got to be patient because when we're aligning things, okay, there's other things going on with the, with the person or people that are being aligned and coming towards you, right? So um, they might have some things to clear out of their lives. They might have some things that they're completing in their lives and spirits trying to make sure that everything is in alignment in a very healthy, very balanced way. But the two of cups is a wonderful energy 
showing that there is true love on the horizon for you, okay? And you need to be open and ready to receive that. Let's get a few more cards out here for you guys. What other messages do we have for Aquarius? So thank you. We have short term. We have work. So I would say with those two particular cards right now, that for some of you, right out of the gate, you're very focused on your work and your career, okay, um, making some money, maybe you got a project on the go, and, uh, you know, with... Um, uh, with um, Mercury and retrograde and Taurus, there is a very, very big energy of focusing on your money, your resources, how you make your money, how you spend your money. So for some of you um, in the short term as the clock ticks, okay, you're very focused on your work. All right. But we do have multiple different messages coming out here. Okay. So for some of you, there's something happening in the short term. Okay. So count your blessings now, be open and receptive now and prepare yourself, get ready. The short-term energy can also represent that maybe some of you are either in a very short-term relationship right now, you've just met your person, you've maybe been on a number of dates, but you wouldn't necessarily call it a relationship. That may fizzle out, okay, um, because there may be something better um, on the horizon for you, okay? So that could be, that could be it. Maybe you just started dating someone out of boredom or because maybe they were just the best thing going at the time or maybe it was just you know kind of sometimes those short-term relationships serve their purpose and it's to um get us back in the game right so sometimes we've got that but if you're looking for a short-term relationship some people are some people are looking for an open relationship we'll grab that at the same time and an open relationship doesn't mean that there's not a bond doesn't mean that there's not a connection or even a commitment there it's just that we're not looking to live together or get married or things like that, right? We're just kind of keeping things casual. And don't forget that this is a new love reading, right? So this is those initial connections. And sometimes we start with the intention of just having short term or we think, oh yeah, this isn't going to go very far. And then something happens, right? A big shift happens somewhere along the way. Okay, but the open relationship can also be, this can also be something that you guys are eclipsing out of your lives as well. Old patterns, habits, behaviors, those kind of things, right? It's like, this is what I keep finding. This is what keeps coming in for me. And this is the cycle that I've been in. And I feel like for some of you, this is what you're leaving behind. Okay, but if you like your independence, Aquarius, and if you don't want someone invading your space 24 hours a day, then an open, committed relationship may actually be in the cards for you. And that may be what you're wanting. Um, and it's not that there's not love. It's not that there's not commitment um, or anything like that. It's just that you have your life. They have their lives. You're intertwined on many levels, but you're just not invading each other's space. And um, sometimes we do get to those stages in our lives where that's what that's what we want, right? It's like, I'm good in my own skin, I'm comfortable in my own space, but I also want that connection, I want that relationship, and I don't want to worry about those things. So you may have that coming in for you there with that also. But we do have the work card, okay? So I feel like number one, um, yes, some of you are focused on work and the money and you know your career path. You may have some changes and some blessings coming in there, by the way, okay? Because we do have two cards with success and abundance in there as well. And I feel like if you have been working on something um, on your financial front or on your career path, I feel like here that this is probably taking precedence over finding love. And then once you figure out, you know, get your ducks in a row here, that's when you're really, really ready to open yourself up. Up, hence that star energy with some patience but the work energy as well can also be that you're willing to put in some effort into a relationship or um, into a commitment right or even into just finding love right you're ready to roll up your sleeves and put yourself out there and yes for some of you it might feel like work okay um you know it's like oh my god I've got to go through like I've got to go through like 80 freaking text messages here. Oh man, oh man, it's not what it's cracked up to be, right? Um, so for some of you, it may actually feel like work, but I feel like your hard work will pay off, okay? Um, we also do have travel coming in here. 
So number one, I think that some of you are making some progress on your work front. Okay. It's not a money and career reading, but it is coming up, right? So it's, you know, if it comes up, I've got to talk about it. Okay. So I think some of you might be making some moves there. Some of you might actually be working some extra overtime and things like that so that you can afford a vacation. Okay. Somewhere the sun, somewhere tropical. Okay. Someone that, somewhere that gives you a little bit of R&R, &R, a little bit of peace and quiet with that star card is just what the doctor ordered. So for some of you here, you are planning planning a trip, a vacation, or this is spirit saying to you that maybe you need to take a load off, you need a little bit of R&R &R so you can get in a better heart space, a better head space, come back and this is where love comes knocking at your door. For some of you also, okay, um, this is very interesting because uh, Capricorn also had this message coming up. So you might actually have Capricorn placements, you might want to check out that reading, or you may actually meet somebody with Capricorn um, in Capricorn placements in their birth chart as well, because their energy also came up that they may go on vacation, they may have a connection that they meet on their vacation, and it could be just a little quick one week or two week vacation romance where you know you know there's a beginning you know there's an end there's no expectation you're just having a good time okay or it could be where um you know there is something that you someone that you connect with while you're on your vacation but it could actually lead to a little bit of a happy accident it could be that they live in the same city as you or they live down the street from you or they work in the same um the same um you know, uh, industry as you do something like that. So you just never know. You may meet somebody on vacation. Okay. But at the very least vacation might be really good R and R. Okay. Especially if you've been working hard and draining your energy. All right. So, um, there's a lot of potential, a lot of it. See what we said with the seven of cups, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going in your, going on in your reading. And again, we do have this wonderful blessings, um, with the star card. Okay. So I'm going to leave that there for you guys. You're all on a slightly different path, even though you're attracting in the similar energy, but you all kind of a little bit of a mixed bag for you guys. Um, and that's not so bad. Okay. So I'm going to leave that there. I hope there was something here for you. If there was something that resonated, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment in the box down below. What is going on? What are you wishing for? What are you hoping for? Are you going on vacation? A little bit jealous over here. I got to say, um, I haven't had one for quite a while, so I need one too. Um, anyway, it sounds exciting. So leave that there. Have a great month. I thank you guys for watching and we're going to move on to Pisces. Hello there, Pisces. Let's have a look and see what messages, what energies, what is playing out for you guys in the month of May in regards to finding new love. Singles looking for new love for our Pisces, please. What do we need to know? Thank you. We have creativity. Oh, interesting. Some of you might need to get a little creative uh, to meet people, okay? Uh, the world is a slightly different place than it was a couple of years ago, right? And meeting people has become quite the challenge, okay, or kind of weird, um, depending what it is. So maybe we need to get a little bit creative. Creativity can also represent your power to create um, and manifest something into your world, those new connections that you're looking for. Um, but this can also represent that you may actually meet somebody by taking up some sort of creative project um, or um, uh, like learning something. Okay. So maybe you've always wanted to learn to write or paint or something like that. Um, and you decide, Hey, I'm going to take a class or I'm going to go to someone's paint night at the local pub or something like that. And that may be where you could actually meet somebody. And that might not be the whole reason for going, um, because it might just be to have some, do something fun and maybe to learn something, but yeah, you never know. A little bit of magic can happen. But creativity, you love to devise new ideas, innovations, and forms of illumination. Okay, so this can also be that message for you to just try something new. Get out of your comfort zone. Okay, and that's quite often where the magic happens. It's just outside your comfort zone. The things that make you just slightly uncomfortable. We have self-love here as well. Oh, so important. We do forget this. Okay, you realize that love of self is necessary to love another. And yes, absolutely you do. But the thing is, is no matter what's going on in your world, okay, no matter if you have a connection or you don't have a connection or you don't even have anything on the horizon, it is so important to love yourself first, right? Just like charity begins at home, so does love. 
right? And when you take care of yourself, you feel good about yourself. Um, this is again where the magic happens because the energy that you put out is now love and it's beautiful high vibe energy, high vibe frequency. And this is what you attract back to you. To, to manifest love, you need to be love right? You need to embrace love. So wonderful energy there. But don't forget to take care of yourself as well. We've had this message come up a few times for people and buy yourself those flowers. Take yourself to dinner. Go on a vacation. Um, treat yourself to something nice. Do something fun for yourself. Don't wait for somebody to enter your life before doing all of those things, okay? It is important to do those things for yourself. Number one, it gives you confidence, gives you a sense of independence, and it also shows, you know what? I am living my best life and I'm not going to let anything hold me back. And when the timing is right, I will bump into that person of my dreams. Okay. We also have freedom. Now, this is such an important energy, especially with that lunar eclipse that we've got, that Scorpio energy connected with the death card, connected with Pluto. Okay. And this is all about releasing and letting go. South node eclipse, leaving things behind once and for all. Old habits, patterns, behaviors, fears, worries, doubts, you name it all of that energy out the window. You keep the experience, you keep the wisdom, right? The lessons that we've learned, the experiences that you've had, but the energy, mm -mm, no, cutting off that energy so that you can be really free to move forward. So freedom, you are releasing any self-imposed restrictions or perceived limitations through the loving energy of openness. Such an important message, and I'm so happy that that message, that that message and that energy is coming out for you. These are the um, what were they called? The Power of Love activation cards. These are the things that are being activated for you at this time. Okay, so let's see what else we've got. Thank you. We've got the Hermit. We've got the World card. Beautiful. And one more. Thank you very much. And we've got charity there as well. Opening your heart, opening your soul. Okay, we do have the hermit card here. And this is helping you to release things in your life. All right. The hermit card, the hermit is where we go within. It's where we connect with our heart, our soul, our spirit. And this is where we open up, where we reflect, where we see what is holding us back or we're recognizing those old patterns and behaviors. And this is giving us an energy and an, an intention to pause, to reflect, to release, to let go and to heal. The hermit is a healing energy, okay? Really helping you move forward. But the hermit is also where we go to set those intentions, to um, make a decision, what is going to light your lantern? What is guiding you forward, right? What dream is going to be in that lantern? So what is it that you want? And it's important to go into this hermit energy, to go within, to your, to, to go within yourself, to really connect and to really be honest and truthful with yourself, right? So, you know, that hermit is not only showing us where we've been and showing us what's blocking us and helping us to heal from that, to let that go. It's also lighting our path forward, okay? So giving us that sense of direction in a very positive, um, very calm, very peaceful, and also a very spiritual, intuitive um, energy and intuitive way forward. Okay. So it's a wonderful energy that's coming in there helping you. Okay. Now the hermit is a solitary energy as well. So it may be that if some of you have been feeling alone or disconnected, okay, or you've just been single for quite a while. All right. This is again, what is leaving, right? So the hermit's helping you to detach and repair and heal from things in your life that are holding you back. But this is also that energy of solitude that's leaving here as well. So opening your door to a different way, a different path, and some interesting times ahead. We've got the world card here for you as well. And this is the energy coming towards you, a completion, right? And this is exactly what this lunar eclipse is bringing in, making a final decision, um, reflecting upon your past. Where have you been? What have your experience have been? What has worked? What hasn't worked? What are your belief systems around love? And when we do take that moment, Moment when we do pause and reflect, we count our blessings with the world card. We recognize that we have successfully completed a stage in our journey, and now we're ready to expand our universe. We're ready to move forward. We're ready to try new things.
things. We're ready to get out of our comfort zone. Okay, so it's like we're shutting the door on one cycle. We're shutting the door on the past. And we're only looking forward to the future. So it's a wonderful energy. It brings success, abundance, and celebration into your life there as well. Okay, now I think some of you may also um, be meeting some new people or establishing a stronger connection with somebody that maybe you've just had a couple of casual little dates or, um, you know, goings on with a little bit. And this might be where things really do click into place for you in this energy. And you're allowing this to expand. Some of you, this is the culmination of previous intentions that you've set. And this is where things are coming to fruition for you. Okay. So it could be, um, a new connection that is coming in that you've manifested. And it could also be for some of you, maybe you are taking a, um, casual, encounter, I guess, to the next level, right? And it may be that you just seen someone for coffee or drink or something a couple of times and uh, you haven't taken anything to the next stage. So this might be where you do that. Um, but I think you're going to reflect on that first and say, okay, is this what I actually want? What does the future hold? Does this look like it has potential or am I seeing any red flags? And if I'm seeing red flags, then hey, guess what? You got shutting them down with the world card, okay? But the energy that's been fitting you the most in the month of May is opening your heart to love. The charity card that's here is bringing in an energy of having an open heart, welcoming love into your life, okay, and, you know, really trusting your intuition, your instincts um, for when this love is real for you, right? For when these connections are real, you're going to be able to discern the things that, mm, I don't know, that looks like a red flag. You're going to shut them down, say no. And then you're also going to recognize when something actually feels kind of right. And when something looks like it has potential. So when we get the charity card, this is reminding you and bringing you in the blessing, the energy for you that you are ready for love, that it's safe for you to love, open your heart, but always trust your intuition, right? Because, and don't don't ignore red flags when you see them. Just because you've made a connection doesn't mean it's forever, right? Sometimes, you know, we do need to kiss a few frogs to find our prince or princess. And we are always have free will and we're always empowered to say no. Because sometimes we want something so much that we want to believe that it's real, okay? And we romanticize something a little bit. So Spirit says here, open your heart, be ready to receive because I am sending you love, I'm sending you connections, I'm sending you healing, and I'm preparing you um, for something wonderful and magical. So let's get a few more cards here and see what else we've got coming in for you. I just realized I'm losing my light a little bit. So we have the hermit on top of the hermit. You know, this has happened for quite a few readings where I've gotten the repeating cards. Whenever we get the repeating cards, it's very important to pay attention because this is like number one, a double dose of this energy, but it's really spirit saying, hey, I really need you to pay attention to this energy. It is really, really important. Okay, so let's get a couple more cards and we'll go a little bit deeper into that. Okay, we've got the Queen of Pentacles. Be patient, okay, but also nurture your goals and your dreams. Take care of yourself. And we have the Tower. So hello, the Tower. Now the Tower, interestingly enough, gets you out of your comfort zone, right? The Tower shakes things up for you. It brings in unexpected events, faded events, if you will. And of course, the eclipse energy brings faded events anyway. So there might be something here where you are really shaking things up. Now I'm going to grab the tower first, okay, because the tower is usually very quick energy, okay? These two are slow as molasses. All right, so very quick energy here with the tower. So I feel this is very much related to the eclipse, okay? You're not the first sign to get it. Um, one, I think one had the tower on top of the tower. I don't remember who that was, but anyways, but the tower here is burning things away, crumbling things away, releasing things that you are not taking forward with you. Beliefs, patterns, behaviors, thoughts, all of those things that have been standing in your way, creating blocks and resistance on your path for love. Hasta la vista, baby. We're burning that down. We are we are rising from those ashes. We are moving forward. Because don't forget, this is a Scorpio eclipse. And we do have bonfire right there with this particular tower card. And with the Scorpio energy, with the death card, it's feasing, Phoenix rising from the ashes. Okay, so we've got to burn something away for something new to emerge. All right, and this is you. This is your love life. This is your outlook and your perspective on things. 
Okay, so a big shift, big, big shift when we get this. Now, when we get the Tower card, it can also bring in sudden unexpected change. Yeah, we already kind of know that. Okay, but it also can bring in surprises. <laughs> okay, um, now these surprises can be um, positive. Okay, um, Spirit's not necessarily going to send you anything um you know, that's not for your best and highest good. Remember, spirit works in interesting ways. So even something that's difficult or challenging to deal with, okay, is always for our best and highest good. Because sometimes it's a lesson to learn. Sometimes it's testing us a little bit, okay, to see if we're going to crumble and falter into old patterns and habits, right? So it's like almost like preparing us for something. But I feel like the tower, there could be some faded event that happens and all of a sudden the old way of doing, being, and thinking is gone to be replaced by something new, okay? I also do think here that you might actually be the mastermind of your own tower moment, considering that is coming in um, right in alignment with the charity card, okay? And so this tower can actually be a blessing. The tower is always, um, always kind of a blessing anyway, although we don't actually view it that way. Okay. Um, but whenever we get stuck or stagnant or, um, you know, we are too much in our comfort zone, hiding away to hermits. Okay. Um, this is where spirit shakes things up a little bit just to kind of shake us out of our shell. Okay. And to get us out of that comfort zone, because we all know there's no opportunities. There's no growth in our comfort zone. Nothing exciting happens there. We know what to expect. It doesn't mean it's good. It just means that it's familiar and we just know what's coming. Okay. But it's not where the excitement is. It's not where the growth is and it's not where the opportunity is. So sometimes spirit will send you that tower. Okay. To, um, you know, to really make some moves forward. Okay. Uh, to help you along your journey. But again, you can be the one that's changing the way you do things, the way you see things, and you could be playing an active role in that tower energy. We can be the masterminds of our own tower moments. Okay. And, um, this is where, you know, you, you, you see that person, they wake up one day and you might think that everything is good with them. And all of a sudden they've left their spouse, they've moved out of their house, they've changed jobs. And it's like, they've just, changed everything in their lives. They are the mastermind of their own tower moment. Okay. So, um, sometimes it can be very empowering, but there may also be a person that you meet that you connect with that blows your socks off. <laughs> okay. Your life was not going to be the same again. All right. So expect the unexpected with the tower energy there. And of course we do have the hermit coming in a second time. Okay. And so number one, you could actually be, um, attracting a Virgo person towards you. Okay, this can be somebody that's coming in here for you. Okay, and this can actually be a spiritual connection. This can be somebody who's very much digging your wavelength. Okay, they're digging your wavelength. They're digging your vibe. Okay, and you know, um, I feel they're being guided. They're being guided towards you. This is also an additional message from spirit saying you must, must, must go within. You must connect with your higher self. I'm sending you messages. I'm aligning people and situations for you, but I really do need you to go within. I really need you to connect with your intuition, your heart, your soul. I need you to really um, recognize, okay, all of that old crap that we don't want to carry forward. I really need that healing energy for you so I can light your path forward and show you the way to something a little bit more wonderful. Okay, so you might have a herm, uh, you might have a Virgo person, but I feel that for on a big, big level that this is really that reiteration from spirit that you have the power within you have the healing power within and you know what lights your heart your soul okay and you know what direction to lead into right but you've got to connect with yourself on that higher level um to recognize that sometime okay but if you look at this this hermit okay here okay which is actually what's leaving your life or what's helping you get things out of your life he's facing the past okay this hermit, which is actually what's coming in for you, right? More details on what's coming in. This hermit has a clear sense of direction and he's facing the future. So by going within, by connecting with yourself, not only can you recognize and release things from your past, but you also gain clarity and insight and a clear sense of direction for your future. Very powerful message and very powerful energy. But again, 
It could be a, it could be a Virgo person because we also have the Queen of Pentacles here bringing you in some earthy energy. Okay, and the Queen of Pentacles can certainly represent you. Okay, and that right now you're focused on your career, your money, your abundance. Okay, you're taking care of yourself, you're nurturing yourself, your energies. You're maybe being a little bit of a homebody. Mm -hmm. Hello. Okay, time to get out of your bat cave. Okay, because again, the Hermit card with the Queen of Pentacles and Hermit pushing you out of your comfort zone here. Okay, this can be where you're very happily living at home. You're very happily in your own shell, doing your own thing, that kind of thing. And uh, Spirit's like, that's all fine and dandy. Um, but I need you to do something different, okay? So the Queen of Pentacles can certainly be you really just nurturing yourself, your home, your career paths, getting all of your ducks in a row, okay? And you're very successful with the Queen of Pentacles. You're very open, you're very receptive. But I also do feel that the Queen of Pentacles here as well is that there is something manifesting in your world and it's because you've been patient and because you have nurtured those goals and dreams in a positive way. Some of you may actually get somebody who is is very calm, very patient. Um, they have a lot of knowledge. They're connected with the earth. Um, they're a very calming influence, but they're solid and secure and stable um, in your world here as well. Now, it could be the same person as the hermit, but it can also be two different people um, that come in for you as well, right? So um, we have a lot of people watching, so it could be completely different people, but it can also be um, a couple of different ones, different options there you might have a choice to make, okay? And whew, you just, you know, again, trust your intuition to make those choices, okay? Um, but I do think that there's something here that is manifesting in the best of ways, okay? And I think Spirit's really trying to get you ready, trying to get you prepared for those connections, okay? So yes, we have some things being shaken up with the tower, but I think it's um, probably been a little bit overdue. So expect the unexpected, you may get a surprise, okay? Um, now, you may actually also um, have retrograde energy, Mercury retrograde, and the full moon, the eclipse. They can sometimes bring people back in your life from your past. But here's the thing. With the tower card here, with the hermit bringing in healing, okay, with the queen of pentacles bringing in this calm energy, I feel that if you do have somebody, a, a, a past romantic relationship, someone comes back in, I feel like this is for you to get that final release, that final letting go and that final closure, not for the other person, for you. And this lights your path forward, okay? Um, you may also, by the way, have a chance encounter with a missed connection. Maybe you... Um, had met someone a while back, maybe even before the pandemic, to be honest, and maybe the, you just keep dreaming about them, you keep thinking about them, and, um, you know, there's a reason for that, okay, so you might just have that chance meeting, and they may come back into your life um, in a very positive way, okay, so we have, interesting, uh, just some additional messages here, we do have work Okay, coming in here. So for some of you, yes, you're very much focused on your work. We'll get the money card there as well. Okay, so you might have uh, something coming in, especially with that Queen of Pentacles. We've got success and abundance with the world card. So you might be completing something in your career front. Okay, maybe it's change or maybe you've just been very much involved in a project. Okay, or if you've been striving for a promotion, make more money. Okay, you might just be get you might just get what you've worked so hard for. Okay, and then this can really free your energy so that you can find love right? And that you can have that free time to find love because you're in a better place when you've got that, okay? But the money card can also represent gifts of abundance, whatever that means to you, in all forms here as well, okay? So you might be focused on your work. Now, some of you might be working um, extra hours to get more money to go on vacation, you are the, I think, the third card, the third reading in a row where I've had this energy of travel, Okay, um, not necessarily the same card, but an energy of travel. And you do have the world card up here and we do have the hermit moving forward. So for some of you, it's time for a break, especially if you've been working really hard, right? It's time for a break. Maybe you've been saving up for a vacation. Maybe you're going to go somewhere with your kids if you've got them. Maybe you're just going to go somewhere for a night or a weekend, a tourist in your own town. Or maybe if you're really lucky, you get to go somewhere tropical with palm trees that you have to fly to right by the ocean, right? Um, that can actually bring you some healing, by the way, um, especially with the ocean. So some of you have some sort of travel 
that is coming up in your near future. Okay, now the travel could just be some R and R for you, um, just to release, huh, right? To help you release anything that's been holding you back, the control. Okay, um, but this can also sometimes when we go on vacation, we can have a little bit of a vacation fling. And if you're really lucky, and if though all of those stars are aligned for you, sometimes that um, thing that starts out with a vacation fling may be a little happy thing where you live in the same city or you're in the same industry or something and it may end up going um, to the next level. So you just never know what might happen. But we need to release control. Okay, we need to be open, we need to be receptive and we need to be in the flow very much like the Queen of Pentacles energy. Okay, very much like the chariot, uh, the charity card energy, okay, is to release control. Don't micromanage the universe. Don't try and control outcomes of things, especially people, okay? We need to allow things to unfold in their natural course of events, in their own natural timing, but we also need to know when to take action, when to take initiative, right? So release that control. This is also where we're letting go of bad habits, patterns, behaviors, old belief systems, all of that stuff, out the door, out the window, because we've got some much better energy and much better opportunities that are coming in here for you guys, okay? So I really feel that this is a month where you're really setting the stage for something magical to happen, okay? Um, and some of you are about to get your socks blown off, okay, in a very positive way, all right? And um, I think there's maybe some very good news on the horizon for some of you. Others of you, with that Queen of Pentacles especially, Spirit says here, be patient, allow things to happen, but be on the lookout, but not to the point of obsession, okay, or micromanage the universe, then nothing's going to happen when we do that, okay, but just keep that open heart, keep that open mind, and you just never know what may head your way. I'm going to leave that there for you, Pisces. I hope there was something here that resonated with you. If so, please hit like on this video, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment in the box down below. I thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful May, and I will see you guys later. Bye.